Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and welcome to Designer's Best. This is where we take a look at uh, some great designers from board games and talk about my favorite games from those designers. Today we're taking a look at Richard Brees. Now, Richard Brees is a unique designer in which, for the most part, as far as I can tell, he, does, he designs and publishes his own games. Uh, he has his own publishing company, R&D, and uh, a lot of his games also fall in the same line of games, the key games, Key Town, Key Dumb, and he's been doing this for quite a few years, putting these together. I want to say 20 years or so, this line has been going on, and in recent years, it has had great success. I've not even played all the games in his series, um, but the ones I have played, I have enjoyed most of them. So I thought I would talk about his eight best games. If you ever re meet Richard Brees, I see him every year at Essen. He is extremely humble, very, very nice person. Loves to show off and demo his games. Here are my eight favorite games from him. Number eight is Aladdin Dragons, the card game. Now, I like Aladdin Dragons a lot. It's going to show up higher on the list. Um, but the card game was a decent version of it. Now, I think the big Aladdin Dragons was originally a key game, one of the key games. Um, that, that they rethemed, and the card game works to some degree, and that's why it's on the list. I like it, but not as good as the board game. Number seven is the board game Geek Game. I remember when this first came out, or when this was announced. There was a lot of excitement about this one. I, uh, I think today it would probably be a Kickstarter, but this came out before Kickstarter time, and people had their chance to get their little icons on it, and it was a game, it was like a meta game about collecting games, about going around and getting games and buying games at stores to get the best collection. Sounds really good. The gameplay itself is okay. Uh, I, I don't think it's fantastic, but it wasn't bad either, and it made a lot of people happy just because of the meta nature of it. Number six is Keeper. Keeper is the game that he just came out with this past year. Uh, Keeper is a worker placement game, but you are joining together with other players to place workers together. This is kind of a novel concept. Now, I think there might be one too many things in Keeper, a lot going on in it, but there's a lot of interesting things, and it has a foldable board, uh, a neat, innovative mechanism I had never seen in any other game. Number five is Cathedral. I really like Cathedral. This was, I think, the first game of his that I played. And what really drew me to this game was the fact that it had octagonal tiles, which almost no game has. Octagons with squares. It was a neat idea, basically getting resources and building it. I played this one. was one of the first games I played. I was like, why am I playing Catan when I can play a game like this? Really cool game about building a Cathedral. Number four is Keyflower. This is probably his most acclaimed game. In fact, they just made a sequel to it, very specific about London. But Keyflower is a bidding game, and at the same time, it's kind of a worker placement. But the, you're putting meeples down of various colors, and so you're bidding in almost three different currencies. So there's a lot of strategy. Every game's going to be different based on the tiles that come out. Very cool game. Number three is Inhabit the Earth. This is one of the few games that he designed that's not part of his key series. This is an evolution-style game in which you are basically making different creatures and kind of making them better, giving them special abilities, and then trying to control different continents and moving along a different track in these continents. I was very impressed with this one. I thought it was a lot of fun, kind of a creepy cover, but the gameplay itself was a lot of great fun. That's uh, Inhabit the Earth. Number two, I already mentioned the card game. The board game is Aladdin's Dragons. Again, this one started out as one of the key games. Aladdin's Dragons you, is a blind bidding game where you're sending your thieves out to go do various things, to go steal gems from the dragon caves and then go trade them in for special treasures, bribing the guard, getting some magic spells that do cool things. This from Real Grounded Games, when I first played, I was like, this is so neat of a game and it's still my collection. It is a lot of fun, Aladdin's Dragons. And my favorite game from Richard Brees is Reef Encounter. This game, which is absolutely beautiful, by the way, much of his uh, art in his games, initially done by his sister, some fantastic stuff. And then even then, like Reef Encounter is one of those weird games that had really beautiful artwork. I really liked the original game of it. Uh, and then when Z-Man reprinted it, I, they completely redid the artwork, but it still looked very beautiful. Reef Encounter, you're slowly building a reef out, uh, different reefs, and using your, your parrot fish to kind of pare them down, and you're going after each other. This is a, a kind of a vicious style 
mean exploration game with a lot of unique, interesting mechanisms. It's the only game I know that can be compared really to Tigers and Euphrates and how it plays. But it just it has this beautiful building the reef that's kind of attacking the other players, uh, using your actions for the best. It is a fantastic game. And the expansion, Reef Encounters of the Second Kind, also added a lot to it. Those are my eight favorite games from Mr. Brees. Like I said, there's some of the key games I have not played, and I'm sure some of you would like to talk about them. So mention in the comments, what are your favorite games that he's designed? Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and this has been Best of Designers, Richard Brees on the Dice Tower.